Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is a privilege for me to speak today in support of Bill uh, C-52, Safe and Accountable Rail Act. This bill is an essential milestone in this government's ongoing work to strengthen railway safety. I would like to use my time to demonstrate to this House all the hard work we've uh, collectively accomplished with regards to railway safety. In November 2013, the Public Accounts Committee tabled its seventh report that contained an examination of railway safety oversight related issues. The report five uh, of recommendations followed similar railway safety oversight themes that were outlined in the 2013 full report of the Auditor General of Canada. Similarly, the Standing Committee on Transport, Infrastructure and uh, Communities completed an in-depth review on the Canadian regime for the safe transportation of dangerous goods and the role of safety management systems across all mo modes of transportation. <clears throat> Before proceeding, I would like to thank the members of both committees for their, for their uh, thorough exploration of these issues which served to further enhance transportation safety for all Canadians. I would also like to thank the witnesses for participating and providing their invaluable knowledge and insight. Mr. Speaker, these railway safety and transportation of dangerous goods studies and recommendations are important considerations to further enhancing the national transportation system. Let me assure you that the safety of Canadians remains this government's biggest priority. As such, <clears throat> It is important to review the many activities and measures that our government has taken to strengthen the railway safety, transportation, and the movement of dangerous goods. Mr. Speaker, following the tragic derailment in Lac Megantic in July 2013, our government took decisive action to ensure the safety of and integrity of our railway system. The Minister of Transport directed Transport Canada to issue an emergency directive to railway companies. This included requiring a two-person minimum for locomotive crews on trains carrying dangerous goods. We also imposed stricter rules for securing unattended trains and companies importing or transporting crude oil were also directed to conduct, to conduct <coughs> classification testing of that oil. In January 2014, our government also launched a comprehensive review of the current liability and compensation regime for federally regulated railways. The goal was to ensure that the polluter pays and there are resources available to compensate potential victims, pay for cleanup costs, and ensure that taxpayers are protected. Input received from stakeholders during the review informed the development of strength and liability and compensation regime for federally regulated railways included in this bill, Bill C-52, the Safe and Accountable Railways Act. The regime includes <clears throat> enhanced insurance requirements for railways and a supplementary shipper finance fund for incidents involving crude oil or other designated dangerous goods. In addition to addressing liability and compensation, we also introduced strengthened oversight and enforcement under the Railway Safety Act. Additionally, to provide emergency planners and first responders with information to, access risk in their, to assess risks in their communities and plan and train for emergencies. Last fall, we directed railway companies to share with municipalities and first responders data on, on dangerous goods being transported. I'm happy to report that communities across Canada are now receiving this data from railway companies. Mr. Speaker, while Canada has one of the safest and most efficient railway systems in the world, we know that we can always do more and we are committed to restoring the public's uh, confidence in our railway system. In addition to the actions I've already noted, <clears throat> We've taken further measures to enhance the safety of railway operations and the movement on, of uh, dangerous goods, and we will continue to do so. I can assure you that we are well advanced on implementing each recommendation of Transportation Safety Board that Transportation Safety Board has made on this account. <clears throat> As I stated, our government is committed to restoring confidence in our railway system. 
We will continue to work closely with stakeholders, including municipalities, provinces, and officials in the United States to assess what more we can do to enhance safety. In April 2014, our government announced measures to address initial recommendations from the Transportation Safety Board into the derailment in Lag Magantic. First, we ordered the immediate removal of the least safe tank cars from dangerous goods service. We also introduced new safety standards for DOT-111 tank cars and required those that do not meet the new standards to be phased out. I am pleased to say that the new safety standards for DOT-111 tank cars were published in Canada Gazette Part 2 in July 2014. A detailed update was published on March 11, 2015, outlining a new specifications for tank cars, the TC-117, that goes beyond any requirements proposed for improved TC.111. These improved tank cars will be the only option for newly built cars for the transportation of flammable liquids as soon as October 15, 2016. An aggressive phase-out program starts to remove legacy of DOT-111 <coughs> carrying crude oil uh, two years from now and allows only fully retrofitted and TC-117 compliant tank cars 10 years from now. On train speeds, we require railway companies to slow key trains uh, transporting dangerous goods and introduce other improved operating procedures. For example, we are requiring, requiring railways that transport dangerous goods to permanently address route planning and risk analysis. We also required emergency response assistance plans for tankers, including single tankers carrying crude oil, gasoline, diesel, aviation fuel, and ethanol. These plans have been reviewed and approved. As of September 2014, September 20th, 2014, there are now expert teams ready to respond to any petroleum spill if needed. A task force has also been created to bring key groups like municipalities, first responders, railways, and shippers together to strengthen emergency response capacity across the country. As you may recall, Mr. Speaker, the Transportation Safety Board released its final report and recommendations regarding Lag Magantic in August, uh, in August 2014. The government officially responded on October 29, 2014. First, the board recommended that Transport Canada require railway companies to put in place additional physical defenses to prevent runaways. To this end, the Minister of Transport issued an additional emergency directive and ministerial order to implement significant changes to improve trains, securement, and require railway companies to meet standardized <coughs> brake requirements. The board's second uh, recommendation emphasized that the need for regular and uh, thorough audits of railway safety management systems. In response, Transport Canada has revised its inspection and audit plans to allow for increased frequency of safety management system audits and allow for full audits to be completed on three to five year cycle. In addition to its uh, two recommendations, the Transportation Safety Board also issued two safety advisories on mine gas and flammable liquid classification and on short li uh, line railway employee training. These are being addressed as well. Following the July 2013 uh, lag magnetic accident, we immediately required classification testing of crude oil. We also required emergency response um, uh, assistance plans for specific flammable liquids and ethanol. Uh, in July 2014, our government introduced a regulatory amendment that provides authority for our inspectors to conduct more thorough verification of classification of dangerous goods. This amendment means that in do, in the industry <clears throat> must now prove the results of their uh, testing. Well, Mr. Speaker, you're showing me that I will have to wrap up. Therefore, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, end now. Uh, about uh, uh, speaking about employee training on uh, we are requiring railways to submit training plans for to the department for review in 2015 department will also carry out targeted audits to determine specific gaps in industry training plans the results will help us 
determine what new or improved requirements are required for strengthened training regime. Mr. Speaker, our government remains committed to further strengthening railway safety for all Canadians. We will continue to take concrete actions going forward. And I would uh, uh, like to ask all my uh, uh, colleagues here to support this bill and vote for it. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Kessin uh, Kamantar, the Honourable Member for York South Weston. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, I, I listened with interest to my colleague opposite's uh, speech. And one of the things he talked about was the lowering of speeds of key trains, of trains carrying dangerous goods. Um, it has come to our attention that recently a number of, of uh, disasters have taken place using even the newest models of uh, rail cars that have taken place at speeds significantly lower than the speed limit that the minister has imposed. Does he believe that the speeds that she'd set are in fact safe for people in urban areas? Honourable Member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Well, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, uh, I would like to thank <coughs> the member opposite for his question, and uh, I'm not sure exactly what he is suggesting. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, I guess the safest way to, uh, for the trains will be not to move, then uh, we will not have any uh, dangerous situation. But in order to transport goods, the trains have to move, and lowering the speeds will improve safety, and that's one of the measures that have been taken. We have to look at all factors that can cause accidents and look at all uh, factors to improve safety. And that includes speed, that includes uh, the technical requirements, that includes uh, uh, new requirements for tank cars. This all uh, 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 put together will greatly improve safety. Wow, uh, you know what, uh, even if we move in a car, driving a car at a very slow speed, we may get into accident. Therefore, uh, I think we have to be very reasonable of uh, how we look at this issue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've had the opportunity to speak on the legislation in the past, and I think, uh, and as many members have, and one of the things I'd like to, to make recognition or give recognition to is the many uh, different uh, railway uh, workers. Uh, you know, in, in Winnipeg, for example, whether it's uh, Simonton Yards or the CN Yards to, uh, in, in my neck of the woods, uh, the CP tracks and the CP Yards, uh, which provide phenomenal employment opportunities and just the incredible work uh, that they do to ensure that we have a good safety levels at, at that at that level, Mr. Speaker. They're the ones that are actually doing the jobs, making sure as much as possible that our rail lines uh, are safe. But there is also a, a, a responsibility and a role uh, for government to, to look at ways in, it, in which it can improve uh, through uh, technology, technology and the promotion of, uh, of research and, and development uh, and using uh, technology to be able to improve uh, the system and encourage uh, rail lines to do more on that front. And I'm wondering if the member might want to, uh, to talk uh, a bit about in regards to the corporate responsibility to be using uh, technology and using uh, research mm -hmm. as a way to uh, continue to improve our, our rail lines, equally for the national government and even to a certain degree other levels of government, that they all have a role to play, uh, that it's not just one thing pass legislation and then our rail lines are safe. There's uh, many different stakeholders that need to, to play a role at ensuring that our rail lines and our trains are safe for the communities in which our trains uh, travel through. Honourable Member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and uh, <clears throat> I would also like to uh, thank the member opposite for his question. And it's a, it's a great question, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm very passionate about technology about improvements and, and implementation of research and technology to, uh, the, to the industry, and in this case, uh, to uh, the, uh, 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 <coughs> our railways. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my first degree when I was uh, uh, graduated from the high school was actually a railway technician, and actually I remember uh, I, I was an intern on steam locomotives, and. I, I know how far we've gone forward. And now there, there are technological um, uh, innovations 
uh, that can be implemented and used for railway safety. There, uh, whether they're electronics or, or other devices, they can be used. Some are used. I mean, we have very advanced and, and uh, uh, railway system in this country, but there are new things that can be used that actually will uh, not only enhance the safety, but it will also make the work of those people that he mentioned much easier and more effective. And, and I think uh, 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 corporations and the railways will and should uh, implement those new technologies, new innovations, new inventions to the system to make, uh, to make it safer and, uh, and, uh, and, and better. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.